you know, but see, it makes you think, doesn't it? Now, let's spare a thought, too, for the teams that carry out rescues in the remotest parts of the British Isles in these kind of conditions. Places where the snow is waist deep, visibility is limited, and the only way to get a casualty down the mountain is on foot. People like Alan here, Alan Howarth, from the uh, Kinder Mountain Rescue Team, um, who do that very job. It is tough, isn't it, in those remote areas? It can be on days like that, yes. Yeah, and uh, now Alan has actually been making his own films. How long have you been doing that? Uh, I've been doing it for about three years now. I just take a, a small handheld camera with me and just film as I go. Yeah, we were very impressed with the film that he made. Would you like to see some of what he's made? Here we go. The Peak District on a Saturday afternoon in February. There have been recent blizzards, it's freezing cold and windy. A team of volunteers from the Kinder Mountain Rescue Team are working hard as they trudge through the snow. We've been to assist the Blossom Team. Um, they have a casualty in the summer, and we couldn't have a team on site in order to carry them off on a stretcher. These video pictures are not dissimilar from some you might expect to see from a polar expedition to the Antarctic. The casualty was out walking when he was taken ill. Um, he's suffering through exhaustion, headaches and vomiting. Now, we have to have some chest pains. So, uh, we're trying to get a helicopter in, but one time we aborted. So we're going to carry him off. Around 40 rescuers from three teams are making this difficult trek. The first party are with the casualty. There's us and another big party behind us. To, uh, carry the stretcher. They need the numbers because the man's more than an hour's hike away and carrying him back in the deep snow will be exhausting. It looks like the guy is further out into the plateau we're expecting. Uh, the snow gets a bit soft once you leave the main track. It's back deep here as well. So. Their expertise is invaluable at finding the quickest and safest route. If the rescuers stray a few inches from the path, they sink down to almost their waists in the snow. Chris floundering. <laughs> Looks like conditions are starting to get a bit worse now. We just heard from the stretcher party who were saying that once they've left the track, they're in four foot snow drifts. So they're really struggling and it's really slow going. So we'll just have to see how we go. With visibility deteriorating, the rescuers press on. Eventually, they make it to the casualty. Extraordinary stuff, isn't it? I know what you're thinking. Why does the film stop there? Why does the film stop there, Alan? <laughs> well, to be honest, I ran out of batteries. <laughs> <laughs> I was on my third set of batteries and the weather does nothing for them. But also, to be honest, as you're the cameraman and you're the person dealing with the casualty, you also have to, you, you have to stop filming there anyway, didn't you? Yeah, we do. We've got, and we've got a couple of stills that can show you what goes on. There's a couple of things that, that come to mind when you look at this. And you look at this here, this is where, the, where you've actually got to the casualty. He was in a pretty bad way, wasn't he? He was, yeah. Um, he was vomiting, chest pains, so we've got to treat that as the worst possible condition. So really, we need to get him off as quickly as we can. It looks like something off the base camp on, the, uh, on Everest, doesn't it? The, the, it's difficult to believe that the conditions can be that bad up, up the mountain there. It was bad up there, but ironically, when I set off in the day, I'd been shopping down in Stockport and it wasn't too bad a day in the bottom. Really? Suddenly we get a call, we're up to assist Glossop on a call out, and we're up in waist deep snow. Yeah, but it's incredible the way you keep sort of disappearing into, um, I suppose if there are holes underneath, you can't see them. The yeah. other thing that, that, that uh, caught my attention is the number of people. We've got another photograph taken here um, of the number of people involved in this rescue for one person. Why so many? Um, it's just literally I mean, as much manpower as possible. Um, it generally takes about eight people to carry a stretcher at one time and we try to do it in relay teams. Um, the objective is to get him off the hill as quickly as possible. So the more people we can have to do that, the better. What do you mean in relay? Would you, would you just hand, share the, share yeah. the, the, the we, work? We have though? a team waiting and we hand the stretcher over to the next team. They move on, people go round and take the stretcher on further. In fact, they came from three different areas, didn't they? You guys, yes. uh, mountain rescue teams, came from three different areas to get there. Yeah, it was initially it was um, a call for the Glossop team. Yeah. Um, they called us to assist them and then when we realised that we couldn't get air support, um, we called in the Edale team as well. Well, I was going to say that, but you mentioned that just there. And the, uh, one of the other questions that immediately comes to mind is why are you all trekking up the hillside and back down again when you could have called a helicopter in to, to fly to the top? Well, we did do that. Um, we attempted to get a helicopter, and in most cases with this kind of serious call, um, we would try to go for an air ambulance. But with these conditions, air ambulances can't fly in low visibility. So we tried and tried, but it was clear that the weather was just too bad. 
You're on call pretty much any time, aren't you? Yeah. So you can be tucked up in bed, nice and snug, nice and warm, all sat in front of the fire. Yeah. With a cup of cocoa, but all of a sudden you get a call and you're up to your waist in snow. Why would you want to do that? Um, I guess it's just the excitement of it, you know, it's, it, it's something different. You, you kind of want to, I used to do a lot of mountaineering, I want to put something back into the mountaineering community, but it's also, I like the fact that at a moment's notice I could be going to do something. How, did, you, how did the uh, patient do, by the way? Um, I never found out. Um, we funny. just literally bring the guy off the hill, put him into the back of an ambulance, the ambulance goes and takes him to hospital. Sometimes you find out, sometimes you don't. Well, I tell you what, we're all very pleased you're there to do the job you do, and I'm sure he was too, so uh, thanks very much, and nice talking to you. Thank you.